In today's show, we're gonna do something a little bit different and we're gonna talk about SharePoint workflows. So the SharePoint 2010 and 2013 workflows are being retired very quickly. And whether you're an on-prem customer or an online customer, you're affected. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna to talk to you about some resources for you to find the workflows that you might have it running so you know about them. And then we're gonna talk about how Power Automate can help you replace those workflows and then show you some of the built-in Power Automate and SharePoint Online integrations to kind of help you guys you know, dive into this and get going. So should be fun, should be fast. But first, here's our intro. Hi, my name is Shane Young with Power Apps 911. Those guys. And today we're going to talk about SharePoint workflows, which is kind of weird and different for me. But, you know, here's my little SharePoint monkey. I got him out. You know, I've spoken at most of every SharePoint conference there's ever been. I've written six books on SharePoint. I feel like I'm pretty well versed to talk about this. And the good news is, is that I've already made the transition from SharePoint to Power Apps and Power Automate. And so as we talk about this workflow retirement and how fast it's going to affect everyone, like I'm the right person to kind of show you guys not only how to get through it, how to figure out what to do, but then also show you the integration. So let's switch over to my desktop and talk about the announcement. So right here, you can see the SharePoint 2010 workflow announcement. It just came out this week. And what they're really saying is that, hey, by August 1st, we are going to stop letting you create new workflows, right? So down here, August 1st, SharePoint 2010 workflows. And now you might be thinking, wait, a SharePoint 2010 workflow, Shane, I don't care. I'm on SharePoint 2019 or I am in you know, SharePoint Online. Why does this matter? Well, for the, most of us, a lot of the workflows that you guys are building with tools, especially like SharePoint Designer, some of the out-of-the-box workflows, they are built off of the SharePoint 2010 workflow engine. And the reason for that is if I put my real way back SharePoint hat on, the SharePoint 2013 workflow engine was terrible. I don't know how else to say it. It barely worked. Like we had teams of engineers. We could never keep the thing running. I'm sure it's gotten better, but the SharePoint 2013 workflow never, or workflow engine never really took off because the 2010 engine did most of what we wanted and it just worked, whereas the 2013 engine was held together with bubble gum. Eee. So to that end though, no matter what in SharePoint environment you have, you most likely have SharePoint 2010 workflows. And so you need to know that in the case of online, August 1st, you can't create any new ones, or there won't be any new tenants, I should say. And then November 1st, they're going to turn it off, like engine off. You can't, they don't work anymore. Uh-oh, what did I do? I think people are going to really freak out on November 2nd when they don't all, all realize their workflows are gone and they didn't plan for this. So I'm helping you plan for this. So if you go down here, you'll see um, that, you know, with the SharePoint 2010 workflows, that includes the approvals, the collect feedback, collect signatures, three state, the classic uh, approval process, all of these are built on the 2010 engine. They will be gone, removed, right? Will be removed from existing tenants. That's bad for you. On the, if you're using the SharePoint 2013 workflow engine, God help you, good job to getting it to work. But uh, with that engine, what they're going to do is uh, they're going to turn it off in new tenants starting November 1st, and then they're going to start working on phasing it out. So the 2010 is like a hard, it's dead. 2013, they're gonna slowly roll or phase out. Um, you know, if you've been using SharePoint Designer, it's hard sometimes to tell, but you've probably been making 2010 workflows. Uh, you could also make 2010 workflows with Visual Studio. So there's a lot of different ways you could do that. So, so this is the first thing I need you to know. Microsoft has announced that this stuff is going away really fast, right? November is not far from now. So, what I want to help you with then is how do you find out if you have any of these? So the first case is if you are online, my old dear friend Todd, right? Todd and I have done more SharePoint stuff together than I care to remember. Um, anyway, uh, he had a blog post he put out this week and it shows you how to use the SharePoint modernization scanner to scan your SharePoint online environment. So if you have SharePoint online today and you wanna find out if you're using a SharePoint 2010 workflow, right? Imagine that, you probably didn't even realize it when you signed up for SharePoint online that you were creating 2010 workflows. So go run the scanner and find out if you've got any of these workflows because you need to account for them. Um, you know, we had someone on Twitter just today. She said, hey, I ran the tool and I found workflows I didn't even know about. She found a site she didn't even know that one of her users had created that had a workflow. So. SharePoint Modernization Scanner, Todd walks you through it. It's kind of, it's, there's a lot of work. A lot of work's not fair, but it takes some work to get it going. So you want to run through this. Now, if you're using SharePoint on-premises, 
then the SharePoint Modernization Scanner doesn't work. So what you're gonna to need to use is the SharePoint Migration Assessment Tool. And I'm gonna put links to everything down in the description, so please don't leave me a comment and say, I need the link, the link's in the description. <laughs> but with those links, um, you can get the SharePoint Migration Assessment Tool. So this is one you can use with your on-prem SharePoint to find out. And this one, if I recall correctly, it runs with your uh, SharePoint 2010, SharePoint 2013, 2016, 19, all of the different on-prems I believe are supported by uh, this. Maybe not like SharePoint 2003. That's where I got my start a long time ago, but if you're still on that, whew. Anyway, SharePoint Migration Assessment Tool, it has a report, right? If we click on the uh, reports, you'll see that way down here, it talks about the Workflow Association 2010 and the Workflow Association uh, 2013 um, reports. So you'll be able to get those out and find the workflows that you have, okay? The other option you have, I don't have a handy link for this, but uh, the PNP, the Patterns and Practices PowerShell, also with a little bit of you know little work, you could write your own PowerShell scripts to kind of go and do some of this inter inter interrogation, hard for me to say. Uh, but so that would also give you another way to go find these if you want to write your kind of own solution. But hopefully this one of these tools spits out the report you need and that's enough because I know that some of our customers we've talked to already, they've got hundreds of these workflows. And the bad news here is that there's not a magic bullet. There is not a way for you guys just to be like, oh, take the SharePoint 2010 workflow and convert it to a Power Automate workflow. There's, there's, there's not that button today. And I don't think that button will ever exist. So what we're gonna have to do is we need to understand the ways that Power Automate integrates with SharePoint Online and then talk about it. And so to that end, Let's switch over here to my SharePoint Online site and let's talk a little here. Now keep in mind, this is SharePoint Online. Power Automate does not integrate with SharePoint on-premises, but uh, you can have Power Automate and Power Apps, right? my, my favorite child. Um, both of them can talk to your on-premises SharePoint environment via the on-premises data gateway, but that's, that's different than a workflow running inside the environment. So, if that's the case you find yourself in, you're trying to understand it, um, you know, we've definitely got content out there. If you look up, I've got a YouTube video that talks about the on-prem gateway and talks about those connections, but you know, you can't deploy on-prem SharePoint uh, or Power Automate or Power Apps, which I know is another question will be in the comments. See, I, I've learned you people. I know the things you want to ask. So I'm trying to save myself some comments below, but leave me comments and say, thanks for answering the question because those make me feel happy. Um, anyway, so, over here in my SharePoint Online environment, let's talk a little bit about the native things that are already built in here. Maybe you've already noticed some of them. But like, for example, if I go to my favorite SharePoint employees list, and so after it loads, up here at the top, I have Automate. Now, keep in mind, you're only gonna see Power Apps and Automate right here if you're in a modern list experience. So if you're still using classic lists with SharePoint Online, you're not gonna see these buttons. But I'm in a modern list, so if I hit the drop down. And so you're gonna see different things here depending on the context. So for example, this particular list has a date, hire date. So there's an automatically built-in flow here called set a reminder for hire date. And if we click on that, what this will actually do is this is going to build us a flow and deploy it for me. It's gonna do everything, right? So unlike our friend SharePoint Designer, it's just gonna build me a flow. So we say continue. Oh, I wanna call this get an email reminder. We'll call it video just so we know which one. And how about a reminder, give me something three days in advance of that date column. And so you say create, and now it's going to go and provision that for us in flow. And the easiest way to get to that, hit the drop down, power automate, see your flows. This will open a new browser tab, take me over here, and look, it made a flow. Why I love this so much is if we hit edit, this is a fully functional flow right now, right? It's going to run, it's going to do its thing but I can customize it because right now it checks every day at three o'clock in the afternoon. But if I want to have it check every hour, every minute, every week, every month, it doesn't matter. I can modify all this Be like, Oh, no big deal. Let's just edit this thing, edit. And how about this? Instead of every day, let's have it run once a week. So it runs at three o'clock every week now. So I, I turn down how often it runs. Then you can see it gets some data. It does some date calculations. Well, sets so the three. It's gonna get my profile and then it jumps in here and then it's taking the number of days that I had, um, so in that case the three, and then computing in a formula to find out what is today plus three. And then it goes and gets the SharePoint list, it gets the items, 
And then basically if they meet the conditions, then it goes and sends a reminder email, right? Whoa. I don't know. I mean, I'm not here to break down everything it does for you, but the reason I want you to see this is because it's all here. So if you don't like the way they do it, maybe you want to post to a Teams channel instead of sending an email, <laughs> be nice, much nicer in my book, then you could come in here and modify this flow. It's all sitting here for you. And don't worry, in a minute I'm going to talk about how to learn to modify these flows. If you're like, oh, cool, I want to do that. How do I do that? We'll talk about that in a minute. Let's, let's get through the, the cool stuff first, though. So that's there. Also up here, you might have noticed that Power Automate, so create a flow would just start us the process of building our own flow. Meh, boring. Configure flows. So it looks like approvals have been turned on in this list already. And so they select the approval mode for this library. And so it has this request sign off approval already turned on and built in. So if you hit cancel, you hit the drop down. Like, I don't see it. That's a little confusing. But if you click on this, or one of the items, now when you hit the drop down, you see request sign off. And what's neat about request sign off is it takes input because we can do that with flows. We can provide information before it runs. And so I can choose, hey, I want to have Chewy, my dog, be the approver, right? He always approves my work or sign off my work. And so then it would fire off and send Chewy an approval and it would go through. And then it just went ahead and if we hit refresh here, because there's a little UI bug, if we go over here, and it automatically created a column called sign off status and it would show me the status if Chewy, uh, you know, if it was pending, if he approved it or rejected it. So I'd get that. But if you're like, ew, I don't really want that. I want proper SharePoint approvals. I'm a SharePoint person. Cool. Then just go back over here, configure your flows, turn on content approval. If you hit save here, what it's going to do is it's going to turn on list approvals, the same approvals that you've been using forever, but it doesn't build you a flow, but you can go and build your own flow that walks someone through an approval process. So you'd have a flow set every time a new item gets created, then go ask this person or that person, do this stuff. And then at the end of it, if it's approved, update the SharePoint approval status. So that way you can continue to use the SharePoint approvals you always have. So pretty cool. So that's a couple. Another built-in thing that I just found the other day, I'll be honest, there is also a whole separate one over here for the page process. So the page publishing process so you can configure your page approval flow. So if you hit create flow here, it'll provision you a flow that you can set up around the page approval process in your environment. If you're trying to keep, you know, make sure people are doing a good job of that. So all of that is just built straight in. If you go over to flow, you know, because flow supports, or I should say power automate, power automate and flow, I kind of use them interchangeably. I shouldn't, but I do. But um, when you come over here and create a new flow, um, you know, Flow has about 300 or a little more than 300 now data sources it can work with, SharePoint being one of them. And so there's a bunch of SharePoint triggers, which are things that say, you know, when a new item in SharePoint gets created, when a SharePoint item gets modified, when a SharePoint site requests to join a hub site, right? All these different triggers around Flow uh, for SharePoint, or there are a bunch of actions. Here, let's just, let's just build a quick one real quick and show you. So for example, we'll go here. I'm just going to skip this. So triggers are what make flows start. So if we type in SharePoint or click on SharePoint, look at all these different triggers. Items created, modified, when item is deleted, when content gets changed in a folder, when an item gets selected. So I use this one to upload files. All this fun stuff, pretty cool. Then there's a whole bunch of actions. There's, I don't know, 25, 30, 40 of these. I don't know, I should count them one day. But so these are things like copying files, creating files, updating content, editing content, deleting content, getting content. What's really neat also in here is if you're really advanced and you want to go use the uh, SharePoint REST API, you can send an HTTP request to SharePoint. So anything you can do with the REST API, which is anything, you can have and do that right here from a flow. Really awesome. So, you know, there's a fun stuff here. Also, if you go over to the left here and click on templates, we'll leave this page and just type in SharePoint up here. And so there are, I don't know, probably a hundred different SharePoint templates already sitting here. Once again, just so much cooler. And so this is your big advantage is if you're going to have to get rid of your SharePoint 2010 workflows and start rebuilding them, don't just rebuild them one for one. Look at the new functionality. You know, we can interface with chatbots. We can interface with artificial intelligence. We can do, uh, you know, just hundreds and hundreds, thousands, millions, gazillions of things all against the SharePoint platform all via Power Automate. So 
if you're excited, you're like, hey, cool, I want to, I want to go learn this, or maybe you don't want to learn it, but you have to learn it because you things are getting turned off in SharePoint Online, you know, real soon. Then I got a couple of different options for you. So the first one I will offer you is if you go out here to training.powerapps911.com, there is a free class, totally free, yay, free, that will be an introduction to both Power Apps and Power Automate. So that one will get you up to speed so you would understand what is possible, build your first app, build your first uh, flow with an approval, you know, just kind of get you going. And then if you're like, cool, I dig that, or maybe you already know all the intro stuff, then I just finished this new course around Power Apps and Power Automate for SharePoint. It is seven hours of nothing but SharePoint goodness using Power Apps, Power Automate, there's some Power BI, there's some Teams, there's some um, OneDrive, there's creating PDFs, there's approvals, there's importing files, there is just everything in there. And so, you know, it's a pretty nice little course that kind of gets you going in a real fast way. Um, so there's that. Or you can, of course, jump over to YouTube and just type in Power Apps and SharePoint and see what the YouTube videos are, right? Totally, you know, I mean, you're watching YouTube now, so <laughs> you probably like learning via YouTube. There's hundreds, thousands, millions of videos out there to do that as well. All of these things, just to kind of get you guys going and be like, cool, because this is the future, right? You know, and we talked about the Power Automate. We're not even going to get into the Power App side, but we use that in replacement of InfoPath. We use it to build custom apps. We use it to customize our SharePoint experience. There's so much you can do with the Power Platform. So with that, I think I'm just going to say, you know, if you have any questions, leave me notes down below. Leave me comments. I always respond to them. It sometimes takes me a week to respond, but I always respond. Um, but, you know, hopefully this kind of gets you guys, A, aware of the announcement, B, how to find your stuff, and then C, ways to learn if you decide that you should probably solve this problem instead of getting a different job. So with that, I'm going to say thanks and have a great day. Hey, it's me again. If you got a second, click the subscribe button. That always keeps me making more videos. Or if you want to work together, need some help getting your Power Apps going, hit me up at Power Apps 911. Always happy to work together. Or finally, if you're really just looking for more videos, that's probably what it is, check out the Power Apps playlist over here and, you know, enjoy that. All right, thanks and have a great day.